There are many ways in our culture that we find division. Very simple, and it's not, it doesn't take much right now to put on the news and to see the different lines in the sand that have been written. Um, one side, whether it be across races or genders, whether it be political spheres, ways of looking at the world, um, Christian or atheist, there's so many different ways that we find division in our world today. There are some that are important, like the ones I just listed. There are some that are not very important, but still seem to have the same, a, a similar amount of energy to them during the course of different points uh, in our culture. For example, ask someone who drinks a Diet Coke if they want a Diet Pepsi. Usually, that doesn't go very well. Usually, um, their face will drop. Uh, as I remember being in seminary and a brother priest of ours now, um, he ordered a Diet Coke. The, the waitress looked at him and said, would Diet Pepsi work? And his response was, will Monopoly money work? Basically saying, it's fake, right? Diet Coke and Diet Pepsi, we got two factions. In our world, um, the Diet Coke people have it right, but those are two factions in the world. Uh, if we want to look at something like playing cards, depending on what bayou you grew up on, Pedro is either cutthroat or follow suit. I won't give my opinion, but I am on Bayou Lafouche, so you can probably figure it out. If we look at other ways, things like cell phones, somebody uses an Android or Apple, one or the other. Some people love Android, they're wrong. Apple works better. There's a bunch of these different divisions that we find. We can be very, very loyal to brands. We can be very, very loyal to an operating system. We can be very, very loyal to a soda or to a set of rules. One of the places, though, that we find the most, let's say, unreasonable loyalty is when it comes to sports. Now, I, being, in, being a, a, a young man who grew up on the bayou, and I, I pride myself as a Saints fan, I pride myself as an LSU fan, so you would not see me caught dead wearing a Falcon shirt, I promise you. The Dirty Birds, we don't want them. We don't want to see them. In fact, I celebrated probably as much as I did when they lost as when the Saints won the Super Bowl. Being an LSU fan, in a lot of ways, I find myself being being really, really excited. And since January, whatever it was that we won a national championship, I don't know if my feet have touched the ground yet. But don't come with me with any Texas A&M or Auburn or Florida clothing. I won't wear it. I won't hang it up. And I certainly don't want you to talk about that school with that coach from that state that happens to be crimson and white. Let's not talk about them. The reason why I say this, we can get very, very fired up. We can, get, we can put a lot of energy into different things that we find ourselves loyal to, but aren't important. They have no importance. If LSU or Alabama wins, it might make me happy for a minute, but ultimately it doesn't lead any kind of way to my salvation or not. When, when the Falcons lost the Super Bowl and then I celebrated, it, it really didn't change what happened on Monday morning afterwards. Whether I'm using a cell phone that's an Android or playing follow suit, it doesn't matter. We can get so worked up over division, dividing lines, that sometimes we miss the important stuff. Today, in our gospel, Jesus says something that's extremely, extremely bold in the first lines. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Jesus isn't just drawing a line in the sand. He's digging a ditch. He's making a crater. And he's a, it's a very divisive statement, he says. To a Jewish audience, this would be a really, really bold statement. Remember the Ten Commandments. The first three commandments are of our relationship with God. The fourth commandment, the first of the back seven, if you will, where we talk about our relationship with man, relationship with one another, 
The first of those commandments, the fourth commandment, is honor your father and mother. And to the point, one of the points of this, though, is that in Hebrew, the word honor is better translated, give glory to. That we're supposed to cherish the people that have given us life. And now Jesus steps on the, on the scene, and he says, if you love your father and mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. You're not worthy of God. It's a bold statement. It's a hard statement, even to hear today. I was, uh, my, when I was a, a deacon, I, I did my first wedding. And it, at this wedding, uh, having been to, in, in college at LSU and, and uh, having a bunch of friends that have gotten married, one of the things that ends up happening when I go to a college friend's wedding is that it's pretty often that at some point the fight song will get played and all the people that we went to school with will get excited and because we went to an SEC school and we have no life, right? Well, I remember getting together, going to this wedding, and the, it was one of my cousins, and her and her husband had both graduated from Arkansas. He played football in the Arkansas team, so his, his groomsmen were half of the offensive line, big, big human beings, and they were very, very proud of their school, just like I would do with my friends from LSU. At either the rehearsal or the reception, whichever one, I remember at some point there was the Arkansas fight song that played, and there might have been a chant or a cheer that they do. And I remember paying attention to it and, and kind of celebrating with them and enjoying it and looking over to someone that was in my family. And I remember the utter despair that was on their face. They, they looked like they were, they were a Saints fan surrounded by Falcons fans. It looked like it was, a, it was a rough situation that they were surrounded by the quote-unquote enemy. In a case like that, in a case where if we're surrounded by fans of another team, if that kind of loyalty can get in the way of family, if that kind of loyalty can get in the way of entering in and celebrating with a bride and a groom on their wedding day, then why can't our loyalty with the Lord? It seems to be unreasonable that we would let something as meaningless as a college football team get in the way of celebrating with another. Then why is it that when it comes to upholding things like justice, human dignity, peace in our world today, that we as Catholics, we're called to step up. We're called to be worthy of the Lord. And even if, that, even if that means rebuking or denying something that someone we know and love or that's related to us might say. See, all of us are called to be peacemakers. All of us are called, the Lord wants all of us to be worthy of him. The Lord desires all of us to come to him and to not let meaningless divisions, meaningless lines in the sand stand in the way of who we, of who we associate or how we love our brother and sister. Now, some of these meaningless things can be what I said with the phone or the team or whatever. But at the same time, a lot of those meaningless divisions that we have in our world are across things like race or across things like gender, or across things like class. So often, we allow simple details of life to stand in the way of us being the church that God is calling us to be. As Martin Luther King said, not by judging a man by the color of his skin, but by the, by the quality of his character. That we are called to be peacemakers, first to love God, then to love neighbor. When I was a kid, um, I remember I was playing Little League, and to go to practice, every day we would pass on our way. Uh, we would pass in front of my home parish. We'd st pass in front of the church, do the sign of the cross. And I noticed out the corner of my eye one day that my dad, uh, about five minutes after we passed the church, made a second sign of the cross. And I asked him, I said, well, did you see another church? What happened? And he told me, he said, no. He said, every time I pass the church, I say, Lord, let me love you with all my heart, my mind, my soul. Let me love my family and let you do good today in baseball. Simple prayer, 
very easy prayer. But what my dad taught me in that moment, whether he realized it or not, that the priority for us is first to love God above all else. When we love God above all else, it makes us better at loving our family. It makes us better at loving our brothers and sisters around us, related or not. It makes us better at being the peacemakers in our culture. And then finally, to do good in the things that we do, that we do in our life. God today is calling us as his children, as we read, as we prayed at the beginning of Mass in the Collect, that by a spirit of adoption, we are God's children. God today is inviting us to reorder our priorities, to refocus on him first, and to allow the love that we have for God, the peace that we receive from his Holy Spirit, the way in which we are called to emulate and to follow his son, to let that spill over into our relationship with our family and those around us. Today, when we come to receive communion, when we come to receive the power of the Holy Spirit through the sacrifice of this Mass, our hearts are being changed. Whether we realize it or not, whether we feel it or not, our hearts are being changed to love God more. And when we love him more, we become worthy of Jesus. We become worthy of the life that he has for us. We become worthy of the vocation and the call that he has put on every one of us to first love and then to go out. Today, may our hearts be conformed to the Lord. May our hearts be enlivened with a love that erases division. May our loyalty first and foremost be to the Almighty. And as we go out, may that, may that commitment to God lead us to love our brothers and our sisters better. Amen.